control the time we spend here and I will finish on time if not beforehand. So let's go ahead and start diving in. Thank you to our wonderful Google partners for making all of this happen. And again, if you want the webinar slides, I dropped it in the chat so you can just click there. You can use this QR code. You can take a screenshot, whatever works best for you. Take that so you can get a copy of the slides that I'm using. And there's actually a couple of handouts in there today. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in everyone. We are going to be talking about how you can win at remote e-commerce time and task management with Google. So this is thriving at e-commerce doing this remotely. Not the best slide there, not a fan of that slide, um, especially since it's not accessible. We actually have a wonderful session on making your small business accessible and if you are looking at making your website really fly, that that actual session and the session about how to make your website work for you are wonderful sessions that will truly help you, especially with your e-commerce site, but it does help you with any basic website design and UX design, which stands for user experience, which is how Google grades everything and how it decides what shows up in search rankings. So you do want to make sure you have a good quality score. To give you some basics here, Google does have what it's called actually let me put this up so you know how to connect with me and I'll go over how it actually determines what shows up high in search there are three pillars all right the first is relevance how well do you match what people are searching for in Google okay so there has to be a match if you are saying hey I do arts and crafts and put together wonderful um, pots and pieces and art pieces and they're looking for ceramic clay pots you are not matching. You are not aligning with the words that they use. A lot of times we are so embedded in our industry speak that we use words that no one else would use and search for. For example, a pediatric dentist may not and have pedi they may actually have pediatric dentists all over their website, but when somebody's searching, they're looking for somebody to straighten their 13 year old's teeth or an orthodontic dentist they're looking for somebody who you know do you use Invisalign or braces or how do you straighten teeth without having to remove teeth those are some of the questions that they're searching and if you don't have those words on your site you are not aligning you're not relevant and you're not going to show up in search so you really need to be an expert in your customer the second part though the second pillar is distance how far are you from the person that's searching so you're seeing the presenter slide info. Yes, Emily, that's what I put up there. Do you see me now coming on here as well? Let me know. Because I put the presenter slide info there so you can see that and how to connect, but I just switched to that. So Emily, need your feedback here. Is everybody seeing the split screen where you can actually see me now or you're not seeing that? Give me a little bit of feedback. Okay, Carmen. Okay, so I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure what, um, I guess Emily thought there might have been another screen. <laughs> Actually, I'm just talking right now, Emily. I'm giving you background that's not even a part of the slide deck, okay? So the second is distance. How far are you from the people that are actually searching? So that also weighs into where you show up in your search ranking. Perfect, Michelle, thank you. See two screens, perfect, Linda, thank you. The third is your prominent score, your quality score. How often do you update your website? Do you upload video? Do you have reviews? Is your site user friendly and is it a good user experience? Does your content match exactly what your best customers are looking for? And do people behave like they're interested in the information on your site? So that's very much a heavy element of your site and the experience that will determine where you show up in search, okay? Now do know also, in search, just so that you know, if you don't have a mobile responsive site and you don't have a site that has HTTPS, so it has to have HTTPS at the end, then there is nothing in the world that you can do to show up high in search rankings because you are already penalized for two things. You are not secure. The S means that you're secure and you're not mobile responsive. And we know that 84% of us go here when we want to know, go do or buy. Go to mobile first. It's the mobile first experience now always. So some of the challenges in working remote, especially with remote e-commerce, because that's specifically what we're talking about now, is lack of direction, communication, and collaboration issues. So ex let me know, are you all by yourself? So just put the number one if you're all by yourself, or put 
The number two, if you're, you work with a team, so you work with a team and you collaborate with things. Okay, wonderful. A lot of solopreneurs here, freelancers, consultants. I see a few people with number two, not to worry. That's good because we'll cover that. All right, so for those of you who are solo, the good thing is you can get out of some, you, you can't even get started with some bad habits after what we actually talk about today. And I hopefully will save you a lot of time, energy, and money by what I'm teaching with you today, just in today's session. Okay, not even counting yesterday's or tomorrow's. But for those of you that do work with a team, take a look at this too on how you structure and organize. Because if you work with a team, you know the biggest cost in time and in money is the team members that you work with, even if you're working with them across the world. So just so you guys have a background, I do have 20 plus years in digital marketing experience. I've got 25 years in actually traditional marketing experience. So marketing is my background. It's what I graduated and got my, you know, my graduate degree on. Everything that I have is in marketing. But for the last 15 years, I've been heavily involved in international e-commerce. So team members span all the way across to Australia, to the UK, to Germany, to China, to the to Argentina, everywhere. So just know that as you expand, you may have team members at different places. And with the beauty of the connections that we have now and all these easy ways to have video conferences, now it makes it nice and easy for us to work with experts who don't necessarily live down the road from us. So we know that communication becomes a major issue at this time. And knowing that, how can you make sure that that direction, communication, and collaboration is happening for your business, for those of you that do have other team members, but then also how are you doing it for those who, let's say, are just starting out? You need a system, all right? I'm a big fan of acronyms. System stands for save yourself significant time energy and money. You want a system in place. This is critical because when we have to invent things or create things on the fly, we expend a tremendous amount of time and mind power, which we could be using to help grow and build our business or maybe take care of our customers. But it's difficult when you're butcher, baker, and candlestick maker in your business, and now you're trying to manage everything else and keep that all clouding your mind, not giving you the freedom to be able to make creative and decisive of things that help you actually grow your business and get to those goals. So a system puts that into place. If you think about it, even back in kindergarten, and if you took your kiddos and you have small kiddos to classrooms just this last couple of weeks or in the next week, then you know kindergarten discovery centers, you have the music center, the art center, you have the kitchen or the home economic center, you have all of these, the library center, you have centers because it makes it easy. And it's not that you have to shift gears and therefore kind of slow down and even stale, make, you know, make and stall your actual thinking process. So as you think about this, what's your system? Do you have a system for setting expectations? Do you have a system for, um, being able to communicate infrastructure or accountability and reporting. So the yes, yes is significant. So again, it's save yourself significant time, energy, and money. That is what a system does. Because if I need to figure out how to put a proposal together for a client, if I need to figure out how to, let's see, write a transactional, so a thank you email to everybody who is doing transactions with on our site. Now I have to go and think, I have to start bringing up different things, look and spell check. I need to see exactly where I'm gonna lay it out. And if I do that every single time, I could spend my day there. And we all only have 86,400 seconds in any given day. How we invest it is really up to us. So as we look at this, how do you set those expectations? Now I am a big fan of Google Workspace. It says G Suite there, it should have said Google Workspace. I changed that last night but I must not have heard save, save, save. But the benefits of using Google Workspace are really important. And I'm not here to sell you any Google tools. Everything I'm talking about today, every single thing is 100% free. I am a bootstrap marketer and free or small fee is what I look for. I started out in a business incubator and if it was not for the help of other people and the ability to not just make sure I focus on cash flow, but to make sure there's no leak 
in that cash flow by expending a lot of things that I can get for free or it's two of the things I had to become really really good at and a lot of times we're paying for services and software that we don't need to pay for because we have a hundred percent free access to it and it gives us the opportunity to collaborate to communicate and to be able to measure and set those goals okay so as we look at this some of the things that we can do within Google tools and the reason I'm talking about Google tools right now is yes, you see on my shirt, I am a Google trainer. I've been a grow with Google trainer for six years now. Well, almost six years. I'm a few weeks short of six years, but I've been with the Google team. They actually searched me out because I earned after 12 years in small business, I earned the state of Texas excellence in small business award that I was awarded by the governor. And because of that, they know that I have the experience in starting from grassroots and having to manage everything while still being butcher baker and candlestick maker in my business. So as we look at this, you can see you can use these free tools with a personal, a free personal Gmail account. You don't even have the, to have the paid account. So I will show you a live demo of this if we have enough time. I do want to be very very respectful of your time but I also want to make sure that I uh, cover <clears throat> excuse me all of your questions because this is your time you're investing on your business instead of working in your business I do also encourage you to establish internal training utilizing an internal website so you can use Google sites for free for that you can even use that for a one-page site <clears throat> or not even a one-page site you can have several pages <clears throat> excuse me but you can use that to showcase your business if you're not ready to spend on a website yet and you use that 100% free. But make sure you, enc you encrypt your devices, okay? Especially if you're working with a remote team, make sure you have a way to unlock those devices and you encourage people to put that as best practice because cybersecurity is definitely an issue as we grow and do more business online and we see e-commerce grow. Authenticator apps are also very good to use. I have dozens of those on my actual um, devices and remote data wiping if you need to so that's why you want to have that kind of control and also ownership of your data and information that's key I've sat across from many many small businesses when they realize this way too late and they've lost what they've needed so today we're going to be talking about communicating so this is the Google section that I'm going to talk about but I'm not just going to talk about Google because understand as I said I have 15 years experience that are not on these slides and I will answer questions and talk about different tools that are used I'm actually going to bring up a demo too of some of the different tools and how you can use them so communicate from anywhere but this is my basic go-to understand I was a Microsoft girl before this before I actually started in business about as I said 18 plus years ago and I used to just use Microsoft and then when Google came on the scene I really could see that they were about helping and supporting small businesses with free tools that will help us access and to able to work from anywhere so how to collaborate and then of course I always share free resources and always a call to action at the end because you want to make sure you're making the most of your time here knowledge is not powerful until it's applied so use your free personal Google account so a Gmail account is a free personal Google account if you've got that then you're golden or you can also go to accounts.google.com slash sign up it does not change your account to a Gmail account if you want to sign up for a free Google account you can access that still with your current email address if that's what you like to do or you have a branded email address now how can you communicate from anywhere how many of you are familiar with Google me let me just ask that in the chat box have you used Google me because it's a hundred percent free with your free personal Gmail account okay Google Meet is free. It is like Zoom. It's 100% free though, okay? So you will find that if you go up to the app keypad. So the app keypad, when you're logged into your Google account, you'll see next to the very top right-hand corner, you'll see what looks like a waffle or a keypad, you know, depending on how hungry you are. And that is where you can click on and see all the apps you have access to for free. I will show you how to get there in just a moment when we go to the demo, but Google Meet is 100% free and you can use this to host meetings and to also do recordings. Now the recordings you cannot use if you have a free, just a free personal Gmail account. To have a recording, you do have to have the Google Workspace account, but sometimes you just don't even need that you just need to be able to get with a team member or talk with a vendor or connect with somebody and you have this accessible to you you don't have to worry about download and downloading anything and anything slowing down your system because now you have extra software this is all browser based 
So you can see a little bit more about this. The paid plans actually come with your Google Workspace. Again, free, you know, unless you're going to be in a meeting for longer than 60 minutes, which a meeting longer than 60 minutes is a long meeting, okay? Um, you can have up to 24 hours of meeting with a paid version. If, if we're going to be in a meeting that long, kill me now because I don't want to be in a 24-hour meeting. But you can have up to 100 people in the meeting. So it's still a very good size free tool that you can use and you can now feel connected and work remotely. So now you can brainstorm with your team. You can share docs together in there. You can utilize the Jamboard, which is a whiteboard. Use that 100% for free to be able to throw around ideas. You can even host online classes or help clients. Let's say you have a customer who has questions and they're like, no, I don't want to come in. I don't want to go to your shop. Or maybe you are working where it's totally e-commerce related. So you're totally remote. You 100% don't show up at their location or they come to yours. And and you might want to do something about how this is how we install this or these are the top three questions people have about our product or their service and we've addressed this or we're addressing this on an online kind of meeting so that you can ask your questions or we can talk we can cover the top 58 questions people have right or the top three questions at least so you've got Google meet you can use here you can go there by getting to that URL there at the left hand after the Google meet icon or under the Google meet icon but you can also get there from your free personal Google account okay so how to use Google meet this is what it looks like when you start using it. So you can do, you know, even people are using it for job interviews because they may not have enough funds to pay for Zoom. So remember what I said about cash flow being king in small business. And part of that is preserving our actual profits by not spending it on things that are 100% free. I'm all about that because if you make 50,000 or let's say you do 100,000 in sales on your online store, but you spent 101,000, did you make money? Absolutely. Absolutely not. Okay. The Google Meet. I teach art quilt workshops. Oh, Michelle, look at Michelle using Google Meet. She does her art quilt workshops. Oh, that's awesome. Michelle, I need to connect with you too. So I've got to make sure and remember that about you. All right. Yes, these Google tools, yes, they are they are there and you can start a meeting, you can join a meeting from there. You also have Google Calendar. Most people are aware of this, but if you did not know within Google Calendar, you have the ability to add Google Meet to your video conference, so to the actual appointment. It makes it nice and seamless because everything is happening right there and all of this is 100% free. Yes. I haven't started on Google Meet, but we'll be doing so. Oh, perfect, Michelle. I would love to see your art quilting classes because I think you're going to love just the ease of use of it. Um, you know, my parents are in their 80s and we utilize Google Meet because Zoom's too hard for them to figure out. And really when it says you have to download something, that can be overwhelming to somebody, right? Especially if you're working with a customer who may not spend much time online. So you can see in Google Workspace, you can also include the phone number there or add video conferencing. So you don't have to use Google Meet, but it's free. Why not? I'm all about free or small fee. You can add more details to a meeting within your calendar. I always like to tell people if you have a meeting, you need to have an agenda. Don't ever attend a meeting without an agenda because you that's like a blank check. Now you're going to be spending all those 86,400 seconds on something that may or may not be of interest or value to you. Now when guests receive the calendar invitation, this is what it looks like. So they can join with Google Meet. It makes it so easy for them. Nothing to download at all, nothing to update. And then you can also do it straight from the calendar. You can do it where you're in your calendar and you can join with Google Meet. So you don't have to worry about logging in anywhere or bringing it up and you can do this on your phone or any of your devices it works so on iCal sign into your Google Cal yes 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 so it's really oh can I sync iCal with Google Calendar yes you can you absolutely can so perfect oh thank you Nicole for answering the question I see now I missed the first part of the conversation there so thank you for answering her question so Google meet features just so that, you know again I'm not selling this this is hundred percent free with a free personal Gmail or free Google account you have chat in there you have the ability to turn your camera on or off your mic on or off so at the bottom part is where you navigate everything to be able to control it you can share a screen a window a tab somebody else you can mute them all if you need to you 
can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them if you need to, okay? And of course you can enable closed captions if you need to. Everything's available there to make it as accessible, friendly, and free as possible. So you can record the meeting. Now understand the meeting recording just so that you know that one there is a cost to it only because it is hosted somewhere. It has to be hosted so there is a cost to that but if you have a Google Workspace which that is the paid account with Google, a Google Workspace, that's included with your Google Workspace account. You can change the background, you can also make it blurry, you can do all the things that you can do to even just showcase yourself. You don't want to show what's in the background, the messy bed, the cat moving around back there, not to worry, okay? You can also collaborate from anywhere with any of these Google applications. So that's what I meant when I said the app keypad or the waffle at the very top right hand corner of your free personal Gmail or Google account. You will see that you have available to you Sheets, which Google Sheets works 100% like Microsoft Excel. Okay, and there's no cost to this. There's no licensing. You can access this from any device that you log into your free personal Gmail or Google account. So Google Sheets works just like Excel. I know a lot of people that manage their inventory and their payroll through Google Sheets. Google Docs works just like Word. Google Slides works just like PowerPoint. Google Drive is where you can store everything for free with a free personal Google or Gmail account. You have 15 gigabytes of storage there to store anything. It doesn't have to be any of these other tools that I just showed you. Google Sheet, um, Google uh, Docs, or Google Slides. You can store PDFs there. I store a lot of times with artists that I work with, Adobe XD files or even Figma files that they access there even though I may not have the actual program to open that up or associated with my Google Drive they can still access it so it does work kind of like Dropbox but again it's hundred percent free so you don't have to pay for Dropbox you have photos there as well I like to utilize this to back up photos from all of my phones and devices so it's saved there and I don't have to worry about losing any of those so now I don't need a backup service and then of course you have Google Chrome Google Chrome is a marketer's dream so it is a browser yes it is a browser but for a marketer it has a lot of tools embedded into it that can truly help you so as a small business it's important for you to know what those tools are and I'm happy to show you those if you're interested and then of course Gmail is a nice free email account that if you do decide to use the paid version then you can have your actual website URL so you can actually brand it to your website okay that's how you can brand an actual Gmail account is if you get the paid version but again I'm not marketing the paid version do what you do but if any of these can help you save you time, energy, and money, you might want to be able to put these into your actual system. Can I convert items from Dropbox over to Google? Yes, you can bring those over and bring them into Google. And again, it's 15 gigabytes. That's a lot. If you do the paid version, just so that you know, um, I think it's $6 per person that has access to that account. And if you do the, the paid version, it's one terabyte of storage, one terabyte. I mean, that's big right? But again, I'm not selling. This is small. What you can do is you're getting started out. You don't have to worry about expending a lot of things as you're just trying to wrap up cash flow. All right. So you can access all of those again, as I said, through Google. See the app waffle or the keypad right there next to the letter A at the very top right hand corner. That's how you can access it when you are actually within your free personal Gmail or Google account. You can also do it from your mobile. Love to do this, waiting for the kiddos in a school line and need to get something done. That's great because now you can collaborate. So you can see, you can save all these kind of files, Melina, in there plus more. It is a storage place for you to save everything that you need to. And what's nice is you can give other people access. So let's say you're working with a vendor or a team member who needs to have access, but you don't want them to change anything. So you can add them here to share and you can decide on the level. Are they an editor where they can change it? Change it? Are they a commenter? So they can't make changes, but they can put comments on the side saying, I like this, I have questions about this. Or are they just a viewer? If they're a viewer, all they can do is see it. That's all they can do. So what is it that you want to give them? Because you, let's say you might have some people, your, your bookkeeper, um, let's say. So you want to share the budget with them and you want to make sure they have editor status because they're your bookkeeper. But maybe you're showing um, your e-commerce manager or maybe your, you know, your partners, your um, family member's spouse. You want to show them the budget, but you just want them to view it. You don't want them to accidentally delete or change anything. You have all of that control in those settings there whenever you share. 
and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But you'll see here in the slides, and again, you've got a copy of these slides for you as a handout in the link. Let me drop that link one more time just in case anybody came in afterwards before I share or after I shared that. You can create documents. Remember what I said? That's like Word. And I'll, let me tell you the big news that I just shared in our free community is that Word now, no, Word, <laughs> Google Docs, which acts like Word, Google Docs actually has AI in there that's doing spell checking, giving you even different variations if you'd like to word it a little bit differently. So it's actually embedded. You don't have to bring in chat GPT or anything because it's already a part of that. Google Bard is Google's AI and it does lean into all of the learnings that it has as Google. So as we look here, you can go to Docs and you can create a document, just rename it. Understand there is no little save icon up there because Google is always saving, so you don't have to worry about saving. It could glitch out, you could get out of the service area, you're all good. Name your document, you could add comments, and I do a whole session on a deep dive of how to do each and every one of these things so you feel ready to go with these free tools. You can make comments here, you can even assign it. When you assign and plus somebody in, what that means is it emails them and lets them know, hey, somebody made an adjustment to this sheet that you need to respond to. So they can click directly on that email and go straight to it. They don't have to go search and wonder which sheet she just shared four with me or which version do I need. There was a version this morning and now there's a version this afternoon. You can also ask questions. You can see here the collaboration that happens just within slides, which works like PowerPoint. And you can go through here and plus somebody and say, how does that sound? You can even assign it to them. So now they will be the ones who need to take care of it. And once they click off that they take care of it, you get notification that this has been done. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I gave something to somebody and I can't remember what I gave to them, okay? You can download these on any format all of these tools. You can download them in Word. If you do have Word on your machine and you want to use it, you feel comfortable with Word, then you can download it there. You can also download it as a PDF. I do encourage that because a PDF stands for Portable Document Format. What that means is it preserves all of the integrity of the document. It doesn't look wonky because understand when you send some, something to somebody, let's say in Word, and they have Word on their machine, and you set your margins to an inch on top, inch on bottom, and half inches on each side, and there's this inch, inch, and then inch on each side, what happens is it skews it, and now it looks like there's hanging sentences, uh, weird spaces. It doesn't look like you took any time in truly making sure that your document was correct. So it does come across really poor. So now you can put it in PDF document format so it preserves that, plain text, even a web page. You can have it all set and ready to go and just give to your web developer so they can install it. Everything is available to you there, plus it's available offline if you need it offline. Just because you may be in an area, I live in rural West Texas, so I live in Midland, Texas. I drive 20 miles to the east of me, and I'm out of service. So I could be, my husband could be driving, so I'm not going to be texting and, and working and driving, but he could be driving, or my son's driving, and I'm working along. And if I fall out of service, at least I know it's preserved all my changes, and it'll update it even when I do get into service, which is nice. Now, we talked a little bit about tools and practices to stay safe, that it's important to have that, and we talked about how to, you know, what the structure needs to be, but we didn't talk about the different tools. So it's important for us to look at, for example, LastPass. There are other keyword ma or uh, password managers. It doesn't have to be LastPass. It's the one that I'm familiar with, but do have something where you're not sharing your password out. Now, I do want to give you a caution there, all right, because if you have given somebody your Google password, do know that you have given them the keys to your kingdom, okay? And the reason I say that is because when somebody has your Google password, and I know a lot of businesses that do this, they give it to agencies, consultants, team members, because it's just easy. It's much easier than you trying to have to worry about, you know, getting a little ping or a code. What happens is then they can log in and operate as you, which means they can shut down your account, they can delete or keep you away from any of your reviews so you have no access to any of your online reviews. And they actually can shut your whole business away from you so they can actually leave you out and change that password. Or, as I said, they can take over. You don't want to do this. I have, sadly, 
especially when we are doing much more in-person events. I've sat across from thousands of small businesses. Y'all, it's, it's sad because I see small businesses that have worked so hard. You know, they've got 400 beautiful reviews, a nice 4.8 star rating, and they lost it because they gave that access and there's nothing that the Google can, team can do to recover that for you. That has to be something that you are responsible for and keep secure. So if you've done that after our session today, maybe your first action that you're going to take action on is that you're going to go change that password and give them different levels like you see here. Instead of owner like you are, you're going to give them manager or contributor or editor or viewer. Okay, so that's the accesses. Now do understand for some of the Google tools, Owner means that they can have the same kind of access, so if you've got somebody who's managing things for you and you don't want to worry about all those interruptions, then you can put them at owner level, but you are always primary owner. You see, that's why you don't give away your password, because you are the primary owner. You don't ever want to give primary ownership away to anyone. And then, of course, you can also set those share settings as well. And I caution you just because, I mean, it's, y'all, it's way too many uh, sad stories way, way too many. And I don't want that experience for each of you. Now, there are other things you can explore within your Google tools that will help you manage your business. I like to use Google Forms. So I actually have Google Forms connected to my website. If somebody's interested in working with me, they'll fill out a form. It absolutely immediately fills out a Google Sheet, which is like an Excel spreadsheet. And now I have all of the information and data there that I need easily accessible. I don't have to worry about transferring things or importing things. Google Sites gives you an actual website you can use internally. I know a lot of businesses that use it internally for communication amongst their team members, especially if you know team members are coming in at different times, then you don't have to worry about onboarding documents or this is our brand guidelines and kit. If you're working with a lot of different, let's say, um, vendors or suppliers, even as a, a solopreneur or a one person small business, because I operated as a one person small business for 10 years. So I absolutely understand that space. And in fact, I find that I default to that a lot of times and it takes a lot of active thinking and purposeful thinking to start delegating to people. So you can do that with sites or you can use this as a website. Let's say you want to test something out. You've got an idea or you're just launching your business and you don't really want to put that on your main site or you're not ready to decide, you know, do I want WordPress? Do I want Squarespace, Wix? Do I want to, you know, do Shopify? Am I ready for full e-commerce or WooCommerce? What is it I want to do if you're undecided, but people are still looking for you, then you can use a free Google site to at least make sure you have visibility when people are searching for you online. Because if you're not visible, they can't do business with you. And if they found you somewhere else, let's say at a networking event or a referral from a friend, and if they can't find you online, they don't consider you in business or credible at what you do. We put a lot into somebody's online reputation. And of course, you can utilize YouTube. Like I was sharing yesterday, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world and number one social network because we do see the amount of YouTube shorts that are uploaded there. A lot of those TikToks and Instagram stories and reels are actually YouTube shorts as well because people are meeting people where they are and being able to get their attention there because it takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money to get people who are looking here, right, to look over here. You've got to do a lot to get their attention. It's much better when you can meet them here. It also shows to Google that you're relevant. So everything that I've shown you is here. Of course, I shared the slides with you. So you've got the slides. But what next I'm going to go into is showing you some of these things and answering your questions. Okay, because I want to for you to see this in real life, what this means in managing e-commerce remotely. Okay, all right. So let me show it to you. Let me go back here. And I'm actually going to show you what some of this looks like. All right, so first I'm gonna show you within a, um, a Google account, but then I'm gonna show you some e-commerce stuff, okay? So this is, let me see, move this.
you that was a little wild right <laughs> when we talk about sorry I forgot to switch um, the screen I'm using but that is what we're gonna be talking about tomorrow okay when we talk about this yes I do help with SEO Emily because there's a lot of things that people do with SEO that they pay for somebody and they there's things that you can actually do on your site and you have control of because you can use Google search console which is a hundred percent free to be able to make sure Google knows that your site exists to index your site and it will actually show you what you need to adjust and amend or add to your site for SEO purposes for you to show up higher in search. So that's what's known as the door to Google's library because a lot of people think, Emily, that Google is, you know, the, the web and it's not, but it's the biggest library of all the content in the web. And you have to make sure you're, we're all responsible as small businesses to enter our actual site into that library if we just hope Google bot Google search bots gonna find it then remember what I said hopes wonderful to have but it's not a poor strategy it's a, it is a poor strategy I mean oh perfect Melina I'm glad I was helpful to you all right everybody now let's talk about questions and what you're going to apply because knowledge is not powerful until it is applied so it's important for you to know exactly what you want to apply I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share for a moment or pause it for a moment and I'm actually, let's see, I'm going to bring up, see if I can bring this up without freaking up.